<sighs> Morning, everyone. Look who's back. <laughs> Welcome back to the channel. Jesse talks all things TDCJ and military. As always, folks, I'm your host, Jesse. Thanks for sticking back by. The last video that I did, guys, I was just burnt. I had spent a month down in Key West, not on vacation, dealing with all the migrant operations that have been going on down there. And it just had me just burnt. So we'll go back about a little over a month ago, I got notification, go down to Key West. About two days before I got there, Florida National Guard had been activated to help try to control the surge that's going on. I'm not going to talk a whole lot about what went on down there, mainly because I can't, but the the flow, the surge of migrants that's going on down there is just absolutely ridiculous. Coast Guard cutters from all over the, it, from all over the Coast Guard, they've been going down around there trying to help control it. Navy, Navy can't really be used because this is a Department of Homeland Security situation. It's not Department of Defense. Martial law, martial law, wow. Martial law would have to be declared for that. So the Coast Guard is just getting run absolutely ragged trying to help control this. Fortunately, we are. It's not as bad as it was. Things are starting to look up. The month that I was down there, it was bad. All you got to do is go back and look just two videos ago from where I was, and you can see what I looked like. And I shouldn't even have put that video out there, but I wanted to give you guys an update about what was going on. I hadn't slept in, well, about a couple of days. It was, it was pretty rough. It's getting better. The last video that I did, I was pretty burnt out. I was right on the verge of getting to where I needed some time off. I was given that. I was able to take two weeks worth of leave. Leave, for those who don't know, is military equivalent of paid civilian time off. I took two weeks of that. I've been on leave, chilling, hanging out here at the house, recuperating, getting better. I feel a lot better from when that last video was done. After I posted that video, thinking that that was it, comments that I got from you guys they were very uplifting I got messages on my Facebook messenger I got emails comments everyone can see the stuff that people couldn't see it ranged from thank you for what you've done on here thank you for all the information you provided please keep posting content please keep us updated with how things are going continue to tell your stories I talked with a pretty good buddy of mine, and it I'm not going to go much into the conversation, but it it helped out. And while I don't really have a whole lot of new content that I can really talk about, I pretty much told all the time that I had while I was a CO there, I can still continue to answer viewer comments. A lot of times comments either don't get seen or they don't get out to individuals that are able to see them or those questions have already been answered. I get asked a lot of questions over and over again about stuff that I've already covered and I realize it's because those videos are buried in the archives. When you make a whole lot of videos, there's a tier system that YouTube does and it's easy for any of that content to get lost. And if somebody, if I had never worked at TDCJ and typed in TDCJ Academy YouTube, there's not a whole lot that comes up. A couple of individuals have talked about it. I talked about it in the first, I think, eight videos that I did right at around two years ago, talking about my experiences there. But for someone looking for new, relevant content, it's pretty difficult to find. And even though I've answered a lot of those questions, that content's easily buried. I keep getting asked a lot of different questions about the initial hiring stages. So, 
where I'm going with all that, I'm going to let this be viewer driven. If a viewer wants something answered, if they want to talk about something, that's what I'm going to talk about. It may repeat other videos. That's fine. If it reaches the individual that it needs to, that's what it's here for. And lately, I don't know if it's economy driven. I drink for it. Cheers, James. I don't know if it's more economy driven or what it is, but it seems like there's a lot of new hires going on. And a lot of individuals are looking for answers that they either can't get from human resources, they can't get from their TDCJ recruiter, or there's just no information out there. So without beating around the bush too much more, let's go ahead and get into a little Q&A session. Questions have been asked. Jesse's here to provide answers. Number one, main question that I still get asked in comments, are the exams hard? What are the exams like? First answer to it, no. Second answer to it, what are they like? They're like the information that's already been put out in the academy. Here's an example. I'm sitting in the academy on Wednesday, and we're having a class about inmate classification. Cool. It's a four-hour block. Instructor's been covering it. Tomorrow, for Thursday, I'm told that we're going to be covering inmate segregation. How an inmate gets classified from level 1, 2, 3, G1 through G5, on into segregation. I don't know how it is nowadays. Things might have gone to 2 and ones They might have gone to tablets. When I went through, we had a book. And that book was about yay thick and it had a red cover on it. The book was designed to get you prepared for the next day's topic. So Wednesday, we're having that discussion. When I open up that book, and I'm getting ready to study for Thursday, it has information about what's going to be about the class the next day. I study in the evening time while I'm staying in the barracks, the hotel, house, wherever anybody's living. You read about it the next day, you read about it, and then the next day, you have that information. What that book was designed to do, it front loaded you the information, so when you got into class, you already had a relatively decent idea about what the instructor was going to prove. And let's say, what was it? That was Thursday. Let's say on Friday, we're getting ready to talk about how an inmate gets reclassified. They either have a disciplinary infraction, something about their case is revealed and a lower level security is needed for them. There was information about how that was going to be presented. So we always had that book that was going to front load us information. As far as the actual exam, I'm sure I did take exams in the academy. I'm 100% sure I did. I don't remember them though. And I think the reason I don't remember them is because they were so easy. They had no impact <laughs> whatsoever on my career. They were so easy to answer or they either weren't even really graded. It was more of an assessment kind of an exam. Where I'm getting at is for the ones who are asking about are the exams hard, if you're worried about can they fail you out of the academy, can it affect your standings in the academy? No. No. The exams are not hard. They will be passed. The instructors might even offer assistance if needed. Not that I could imagine anyone would need it. I think the only two ways that you could fail an exam at the TDCJ Academy is if you fail to show up that day or if when it came time to take the test, you got up and walked out of the room. That's the only two ways I could think of failing it. Other than that, there's nothing to worry about with the TDCJ exams. Question number two, how hard is the PAT, physical agility test? That is one thing that you're going to have to prep yourself for. It is physical. When I went through, it consists of having to climb a series of stairs having to run a certain distance in an amount of time. I think it was a quarter of a mile 
which is one lap around a standard high school track. We ran around the parking lot at the academy, which I think might have been three laps. Probably wasn't even a quarter of a lap. We had to drag a lifelike dummy, I want to say 50 yards behind us, and there was a ladder climb. It wasn't anything physical. I say physical, it wasn't like a military boot camp. It's not like I'm having to run three miles in 18 minutes or a mile and a half in 12 minutes. It wasn't anything like that. You could fail the PAT. When I went through the academy, there were individuals who didn't make it. Some that had knee problems, some hips, others that had problems, uh, tendonitis, elbow related, couldn't climb the ladder. It's good to identify those situations before you actually get to the unit and it's time to do it in real life and you realize you can't do it. And then there is a problem. So yes, it is physical. No, it's not like any kind of military boot camp. You do need to show up ready to work out though. When I went, it was one of the very first things that we did. Once we got in the building, they took roll call and we had to be dressed out and ready to go. There were some individuals who didn't even bring any kind of workout clothes and they were doing the PAT and whatever it was that they showed up to work in. That's not a bad thing because when do you wear PT clothes while you're on the job as a CO? Never. In the academy. What are you wearing? You're wearing the shit you came to work in. Button-up shirt, long sleeves, tucked in. In my case, at SIG, we had the stab vest. You got your pants on. When I say pants, I mean your trousers. They might fit. They might not. They're made by inmates. And then whatever kind of footwear you were wearing. Either black leather boots, black leather shoes. You did have an option. When I first started at work, I wore Bates tactical black leather boots. I kept a good polish on them. After about a year and a half of wearing those, Man, they were, they were just heavy on my feet and just walking as long as I did. I ended up switching to Skechers. I switched to Black Leather Skechers Shoes Academy, which is a Texas thing. It's not here in Virginia, which kind of sucks. I really wish I had one around here. They sold those Skechers shoes. They were cheaper. I wore those. I was quicker. I was lighter on my feet. So, when you're getting physical at the penitentiary, you're in what you're wearing, not in physical clothes. You get that benefit there in the academy. So yeah, you do need to show up in a pretty decent amount of physical shape. Question number three. Do you get fed and housed while you're in the academy? Well, the answer to that is a half yes. Yes, you are offered housing. When I went to the academy in Huntsville, we stayed in a condemned dormitory at Sam Houston State University. It was a building that had been deemed not, oh, I don't even know what the word is. It was a building that they couldn't house the college students for anymore at Sam Houston. So what were they using for? That's where they're going to stick the cadets. They're going to be working for TDCJ. We had a couple of different academies we could pick from. Rocheron was on my list. Huntsville was on my list. I picked Huntsville because that was the one that was closest to me. We lived in a room that was designed to hold two individuals, and there would be eight of us crammed into that room. Bunk beds, one closet space, you pretty much had enough for you and your sense of smell while we lived there. It was extremely spartan, but it was free. Okay, you didn't have to live there. They didn't care where we stayed. As long as you showed up for class the next morning, ready to go and ready to get on shift, that was all that was cared about. Food, breakfast, never. No go. Lunch, every now and again, we'd be able to go over to one of the neighboring units. When we were at the academy, we could either go over to the Ellis unit, or if we were closer to the log cabin, what was that unit? Oh, I can't even remember. I'm sorry, folks. It's been too long from me. Lunch, very rarely. The Gory unit. Yes, Gory. I'm sorry. Just had a, a brain brush. 
While we were at the log cabin, we'd go over to the Goree while we were at the academy because the log cabin and the academy were separate. When I first started, the first two weeks, I was at the log cabin because the classes were full. When class graduated, I was able to go to the actual academy. And then we'd go over to the Ellis unit for lunch from there. If the instructors had time to take us, we had to be escorted, yada, yada. Dinner, because I stayed in the Huntsville area, I went to the Walls unit every evening. And every unit they had, every unit, every evening at that unit, they had some kind of weird different concoction. They either had the little hockey puck shaped things made out of pork, pork patty as they called it, or they had some kind of bean stew or some kind of bean concoction with vegetables poured up in it. Every now and again, there'd be some kind of brown mystery meat patty that I heard individuals call to as a break pad, because that's about the consistency that it had on it. But again, it was free. So be ready to provide your own meals the majority of the time that you are in the academy. How often do you get paid? I get asked that quite a bit. So, next question. You get paid once a month. You get paid on the 1st or the equivalent thereof. If the 1st falls on Saturday, it might be the 30th. It might be the 2nd of the next month. You're never going to get your paycheck on the 15th, 17th, 20th. It's never going to be in the middle of the month. It's always going to be at the earliest time. You have to have direct deposit. You need some kind of an account, either a checking or a savings account, with some form of a financial institution that has a routing number. You're going to need that information when you hire on. You don't get paid bi-weekly. You don't get paid weekly, two weeks, three weeks. It's all straight up once a month. State troopers, state nurses, teachers, all state employees of the state of Texas get paid monthly. You are required to have some kind of insurance through the state. There's minimum amounts that you're required to have. In my case, I was a reservist. I had TRICARE. I had full coverage insurance. I didn't need any other kind of insurance. I had to carry something through the state. That's for the liability purposes that they go through. At the time, that was through the LECO system, law enforcement, corrections officers, something. There's a separate entity called when I went through, it was T-Close. It's T-Cole now, Texas Commission on Law Enforcement, whatever it is. That applies to commissioned peace officers. These are the individuals that drive around in the black and white cars, red and blue lights, whoop, whoop, lights you up, arrest you kind of thing. That's for those individuals. The ones that work behind the bars, separate kind of a retirement system. So you pay into your retirement system, and you pay into your benefit system, two separate pots. All that gets discussed during the first week of the academy. I want to say, so the academy started on Monday. I think it was around Wednesday or Thursday. The clerks met with us, passed out all the information, signed up for what kind of benefits that you need, had to carry a minimum. There was a lot of other extra stuff that you could carry. I was single, not married at the time, no dependents carry the minimum amount that I need. There were individuals that were married, they had kids, they need more insurance, more benefits. That's set up for that time. Then the union, as worthless as that is, they get to do their pitch from you, from you. They get to do their pitch, try to take as much money from you that they can. That's also where you get to sign up for the commissary. I do recommend for anybody, sign up for the commissary at least at least $15 a month withdrawn from your paycheck, it is well worth it. It's tax-free. You don't have to go to the grocery store. Typically, I go to the commissary either at lunchtime or after I got off shift. I buy everything that I needed. It was already ready to go. You take it home straight with you. What's it like working in a penitentiary? Well, guys, I can't answer that question with a one sentence kind of an answer. I wish that I could. That's unfortunately why I have over a hundred videos on this channel 
about what it was like working there. You're just going to have to watch them. Don't take anything that you see on TV. There's a show you could watch on YouTube behind rookie bar, behind bars, rookie season. There's locked up, locked down, world's toughest prisons, all those. Nothing that you watch is going to prepare you for the very first time that you walk into a penitentiary. You'll go in in the academy. We did three unit tours. You go in as a group. You got a bunch of individuals around you. Inmates are all beating, banging, hooting, and hollering. Everyone's kind of looking at each other. You got the the one individual who's just riled up, ready to go, squad leader, as we called them. You got the robocop there. Then you got the cadet that, oh, they're not going to see me. I'm just hiding this group. Well, five weeks, you graduate, and you walk inside that pod. And you're all by yourself. And there's at least 84 of them dudes running around there. And just like a shark tank sniffing blood, they smell a brand new fish. And that's when the reality of the job starts. So, folks, I hope I've done the best I can to answer the questions. These seem to be the most repeat, recurrent questions that I have. I said I was going to keep the channel active if it was needed. I keep getting these questions quite frequently. And the only reason I can think that I got them is because the videos that I did previously have been buried. So hopefully this raises it up to the algorithm. Hopefully it answers the questions that individuals do have. If y'all have any further questions, let me know. I'm going to keep an eye out for any kind of comments or messages. Anybody wanting anything in specific. I'm still around. Happy Saturday to everyone. Stay warm. It's still wintertime. Still cold here. Hope everyone's doing great. I'll see you on the next video.